it honestly scares the shit out of me when I'm driving down the highway and I see an 82 year old fucking speeding past me. Old people are driving! You're scared that an 82 year old is driving. But we have a president who's 80 fucking two and he's barely walking, bro! Yeah, watch out, watch out, watch out! Let's hoard up. All of the old people and put them in camps. Everybody 65 plus ends up in a fun little camp. It'll be great. They can concentrate on like <laughs> knitting. They, they can, can do little tasks like make socks and we can sell them. We can even like have, a prison. We can have and Biden they can have a you know. We can have Biden and we'll give him like a pretend oval room. Videos rolling. Videos rolling. We back, baby. We back! We back, baby. We Whoa. back from the beginning. <sighs> okay, now we can start the podcast. <laughs> uh, we got a lot to talk about, and we got little to talk about at the same time. It seems like even the craziest. Oh, we're news... talking about Barbie. Yeah, there. Yeah, we had all. Uh, well, now we list. are. I mean. <laughs> I guess we kind of have to. <laughs> no, so there, so there was a Barbie movie that came out. Margot Robbie, with your Mar girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she looks uh, like that. Just, dude, that makes me so fucking happy because Margot Robbie is like the uh, Margot Robbie is like the like ultimate chick the like these years. You know, like the, I feel like the millennials had Megan Fox with the toe thumbs. With like the that. toe thumbs. Oh, you got toe thumbs too. I got one toe thumb. I have brack brachydactyly okay. type D. We don't need to hear the definition at one thousand <laughs> percent. Brachydactyly. Brachydactyly is that what it's called? Type D. Yeah, type D means that it's in your thumbs. The other types are like your toes and shit. I had no idea. You know, mm -hmm. even even a babe like Margot Robbie still has some autism thumbs. Yeah. Yeah, the tism thumbs. Yeah. yeah if you like... got two of them, it means it's a like a really good sign of autism. I only got one, so I'm only half autistic. <laughs> Here, show your right thumb. Be like, I'm a... No, no, no. Just throw your right thumb. No, just throw your right... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm a normal person. I am completely uh, just a normal thumb. Going around his thumb. Now show your other one. I like twains. <laughs> It's flat on the top, look. I feel like, do you ever use that thumb, like, when you're pressing elevator buttons and it just fits, Fuck no, like, perfect? Dude, and... you know what? I can't open doorknobs with this hand unless I try really hard. I prefer, um, like, handles. <laughs> do you qualify for disability? I fucking should. <laughs> At you, this point. Could you imagine going into the office and it's, like, a waiting room and there's, like, a guy there that's, like, <laughs> keeled over? There's, like, some lady with, like, no leg. There's, like, another guy with, like, the arms just kind of just flail there, and you're just, like... <laughs> Help me! You're trying to get, get $3,000 a month for your disability? Yes. Brachydactyly type D. Watch me. Just watch me. And you just sit there trying to open up the door. <laughs> In front of it this government sucks, official. Dude, I don't I have like half an inch less reach on this hand. Look. Well now you know how most men feel. So Well, you know, we could all use an extra inch. That's true. That's yeah. true. If you have brachydactyly on your dick, please use blue chew. Use blue code Padre. <laughs> Brachydactyly on your dick. That's just a small dick. That's just Shh. Isn't that that seems like discrimination. <laughs> like as soon as your thumb is like abnormally small, people are like, "Oh, that's a disease. There has to be. We have to have medical intervention. We have to. Uh, we have to go in there and like s research it." So as soon as like men I have could... small dicks, they're just like, "That's just nature." Do you think that we could all probably get like a scholarship from that? Probably small dick scholarship. A small dick scholarship. <laughs> go to the small small dick university. <laughs> learn about small penises. <laughs> <laughs> My microgenitalia <laughs> university. That would be that would be the only university where it's ninety nine point nine percent men. <laughs> the rest of the world is like seventy percent women. How would you have a microgenitalia as a woman? Is it like are you just a small woman? 
You no know, girls. You know, and when girls take testosterone, trans men when they take t- like testosterone, they literally grow like a little dick. Oh yeah, well yeah. yeah, out of their clit. Yeah, right. And that's like the smallest dick, which is like right. But how do you get a tinier vagina? I don't know, like what constitutes. A I think if we would have figured that out, then every woman in their sixties isn't that just would isn't that just a... Kegels? Can't no, you get that's, that's a tighter. tighter. Hmm. I don't think you can shrink your your vagina. I don't think so either. It's an orifice. Is that a thing? Like it's like shrinking your mouth. You can't shrink your mouth. You can make your mouth stronger. What other body part can you shrink? Your stomach. Yes. You can shrink your stomach. That's, That's true. Nasty. Yeah. You can also shrink your ears and your nose and your lips, but you can't shrink your mouth. You can do whatever you want to your lips, but you can never really change your mouth besides taking teeth out of it and putting teeth in. I don't know. We'll figure it out, man. We'll figure it out. All it takes is somebody to have an identity, and there's going to be surgery for it. You I know. identify as half Megan Fox. Half Megan Fox? The government's paying for you to look like Megan Fox? No, if they were, then I wouldn't be here right now. I have, I have Megan Fox disorder. That's where I feel like I should have been born as Megan Fox, but I'm wasn't. one thumb away. One thumb away. She has two thumbs. I thought that was Margot Robbie. Or no, no, that's no, not Margot it's Robbie. Megan, Megan Fox. Fox. Yeah, who recently just broke up with uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Oh yeah, and burnt all of his shit in a fire. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah like outside. She put it on her Instagram. Look, it was like public. <laughs> all I gotta say is, if if I dated a girl. As hot as Megan Fox, I would be disappointed if she didn't act batshit crazy at the end of the relationship. You can't it's be that of, hot and not be crazy. It's part of the yeah. it's part of the package. You know what I mean? Like you can't even pretty like, girl, yeah. crazy girl, same thing. If I had like a, if there was like a ten in front of me and she was totally normal, I would be more scared of that woman than anyone else because because she's, she's not normal. She's, she's hiding, hiding it. She's hiding something. Yeah. It's She's deep. Hot. There's something deep in down. There, you She's know gonna I mean? murder you one day. You're gonna say the wrong thing. You're gonna say that her sister looked fat in her bridesmaid's dress. She's gonna hold on to that for three years, and then one day, one day, you're gonna forget to pick Timmy up from from base, from baseball practice. And she's going to be waiting yeah. with a baseball bat. It was like, uh, like what is that movie, Gone Away Girl or uh, Gone Girl? Gone Girl. Gone Girl. Girl, girl gone. Girl was gone. That's all I gotta she, say. All she I know out is that was out of there. But he like, he like, he made she made this whole thing to make it seem like he murdered her. And <laughs> this poor guy, Ben Ben Affleck's just like, I oh, mean, I was just in a relationship and a marriage, and all of a sudden now, I'm being gone, girl. Yeah, gone, girl. Gone, girl. Gaslighted, girl boss. No, no, no. okay, dude. <laughs> we gotta be back on track. Okay? Barbie, Margot Barbie. Robbie. So Barbie I, Robbie. I read this recent article that I thought was hilarious for whatever reason that uh, the actual creation of the Barbie set, for, which is a new movie that's coming out with um, Ryan. Ryan Gosling and Margot <laughs> Robbie. Um, this is hilarious. Hmm. They apparently the creation of this movie created a um, created a shortage of pink paint. This is a this is a real national security issue. There if was you've ever seen an issue that much pink paint on set, according to the movie's director in, Greta Gerwig. International shortage on pink paint. They wanted everything to be hand painted instead of using CGI. Why? Because they we have the technology. <laughs> Wanted to create an authentic uh, artificiality to uh, for the Barbie movie, so she requested that everything be hand painted instead of using CGI. If you want artificiality, use CGI. What the? F- that is very pink. Yeah, no, like that. That looks like a doll set. Like, I'd live there. Also, I like, would live there. Who knew that there was such a world short? There's like there must be not that much pink paint. There has to, you know what I mean? Like, it's nobody using pink paint because you don't use it for your car. It's not 2007 and nobody, okay, listen, pink isn't cool anymore. Pink used to be the new black. I don't know if you know this. The 2000s, pink came back. Pink was in. Y2K brought pink. 90s, pink was out. You know what I think 80s, 
Pink was in. Every 20 years, trends come back. That's why you never get rid of your jean jacket. You ever heard somebody say that? You never get rid of the jean jacket. You just keep it there for 10 years and you can wear it again. Yeah. It'll be cool. Same thing with pink. It's the same exact thing with turquoise, too. Guess what? Turquoise, ew, gross. In about seven years, that's just going to be popping again. A color? Yes. It's... Yeah. Why do you think Pantone has the color of You know the what? I think uh, that is very true. Because back in the day, black wasn't really seen as like something you really wanted. But now chic. black's all over the world. It's chic. It's chic. It's, it makes you skinny. It's, it's chic. It makes you look richer. It makes you look thinner. Yeah. Black is the new in color. And guess what? If you wear pink, you're you're seen as attention-seeking, innocent, and Wearing also immature. Wearing seem like a attention seeker? No, pink. Oh, pink, yeah. No, you know what brought back pink was Legally Blonde. Well, duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> that was like an What, like it's movie. hard? <laughs> <laughs> love that shit. No. How do, Unabashedly feminine. How many, I love that how many shit. girls do you think saw that movie and they're like, I'm going to law school. And then like after a semester, they're like, I'm going to be a cosmetologist. <laughs> Angels in law school. And Angel's the most punk rock chick I've seen in a few years. You know who also is in law school? Kim Kardashian. Yeah, but Kim Kardashian has millions of dollars. That's true. Angel has a jean vest. <laughs> Angel. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be the currency of the future. Jean One vests. Day, jean vests. <laughs> <laughs> you only had three jean vests. <laughs> Like fall out, well, yeah, yeah. This out. this car costs at least five jean vests. Five jean vests, maybe four and a half at most. I only have five patches. Five? That's unheard of. Who are you, a Saudi Arabian Wait. lord? <laughs> so if the eighties, if the eighties are coming back now, because I see pink coming back in like the nineties, right? Yes. And we see no, we see two thousands. The two thousands. It was in the eighties and it was in the two thousands. So, yeah. so like fifteen years. And then now we see the eighties coming back. I feel like Y two K. The bullets. Yes. Right. The mom jeans. Uh, the bolt, dude. The cuts. Haven't you seen a bunch of a bunch of high schooler kids like guys are wearing the like the middle part. Like hangover. Oh, like the Leonardo the DiCaprio yeah. Titanic haircut. Um, I personally hate it. I think the Y2K is super cute. I think that they're conforming, um, to more of, like, a higher beauty standard than we did. Like, real Y2K fashion was, like, you wore a dress over jeans. That was why. That, yeah, it was why. That, that, Hillary Duff wore that on the red fucking carpet. You can't tell me with a thin scarf, with a thin with a thin, translucent, layered, sparkly Dude, pink the fashion, scarf. the fashion from the from like early Nickelodeon. We thought that was hot. Dude, we saw that. And we were like, "Oh, killing it!" Now yeah. we're like, "Now we're like, what the fuck was he wearing?" <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. And like, I, I, I'm appreciating that Y2K is coming back because Gen Z, honestly. They're doing it so much better. They're doing Y2K fashion so much better. They're like, oh, everything is clueless and everything is uh, the craft and everything yeah. is yada yada, like the best of the best. They're not doing... The creme de la creme. Yeah, they're not doing fucking Jessica or fucking goddamn Britney Spears. <laughs> the fucking jean suits. The jean, the Canadian tuxedos. Formed into a ball gown on Britney yeah. Spears. I just feel like it's a little weird because, like, the haircuts that they're all wearing now used to be the haircuts of, like, the jocks in the 2000s. And now they're the nerds now. Yeah. Well, now they're like, I'm, my, my pronouns are they slash she slash. And it's like, bruh. Just pick a celebrity. Either be, have the bully cut, stick with the bully cut, or, 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 or fucking be a, a pronoun person. Pick you, one. <laughs> Pick one. Pick yeah, one. pick one. There's absolutely, like, it, it feels like, what happens is I think that a lot of Gen Z is taking the fashion from the 2000s, even though they have no connection to it other than the fact that it's, like, niche, right, that the people, because that's millennium fashion, but millennium fashion kind of moved out of it. But let, okay. Millennials stop, stop dressing like millenniums. Dude, millennial fashion... You know what is okay? Here's the thing. This is all over TikTok. Is that oh, if you have a true. side part, 
and you wear skinny jeans, you're old. You're old. You look out of date. You look old. And it's the same exact thing as eight years ago. Yeah, that's if you a saw, millennium cut now. Yeah, if you saw somebody wearing a long shirt with a belt over it, old. Yeah. Old. Out of date. Terrible. And people have taken to being like 55 years old, getting a middle part, and wearing like freaking goddamn parachute pants like you know bell bottom jeans and they're like this makes me look young and it's like we can see your wrinkles karen and you're still screaming at us <laughs> you're not fooling anybody we still hate you and uh you're living longer than your life expectancy so please give up your social security so some of us could have a chance <laughs> Yeah, just plead, just plead with the, uh, with uh, with all the old folks. I thought COVID was gonna kill all of them, and I was wrong. And it's really upsetting because I thought it was gonna fix the economy, and now we're still in a housing crisis. I thought it was gonna fix the economy. I it love that. Would have yeah, COVID happened, and you're just like perfect. This is gonna. I di- I thought that this was gonna be the the fix, and you know what? Now <laughs> the fix. Yeah. People are not supposed to live this long. This is the longest people have ever lived in the history of humanity. Is it a genocide? And it is causing issues because they're hoarding wealth, assets, and also resources. You cannot be 72 years old with four houses, seven cars, and eight Teen fucking family members that you're not going to give a penny to, and you keep getting heart surgeries. You (laughs) Die! Just... Just fucking let yourself go. Just what, the light. It's there. Go. That's what I use as an insult. Like your grandma's pissing you off. Be like, you bitch, you on your seventh heart surgery. Okay. You're like our chihuahua. He shouldn't be alive. But yet you're still around here. <laughs> He's 22. <laughs> When's the last time you met a 22 year old chihuahua? That's what you are. <laughs> My chihuahua's looking at that insurance rates. <laughs> he can't eat he can't. solid food. He has no teeth. At that point, yeah, it's like, well, dude, what's going on? Because that's that's like my other thing is that, uh, you know, the our, the the ages that people are dying like continue to go up and up and up and up and up. We're seeing that we're seeing that happen in Japan right now. In fact, the biggest impact that a growing older population has is on dating, because the more older people have uh, children, the the least likely they are to be good parents. Yes, because they're going to become incapable of being parents. It's I've I don't know. This... Now that I think about it, like today, like would you would you rather have really old parents or like really young parents? Young parents. You know why? Because old people psychologically this is a scientific fact the older you get the younger you become in the brain would yeah, you but... want a 6 year old babysitting your fucking grandchild no and that is exactly what your 75 year old grandmother is in the brain when you become old you are physically unable yeah. to be as adept to yeah. any kind of situation. Yeah, that's true. Your brain physically breaks down and like it honestly scares the shit out of me when I'm driving down the highway and I see an 82 year old fucking speeding past me and I'm like that person wait, 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 wait. should hold on, not hold on. be driving. Hold on. You said that you're scared that an 82 year old is driving. Yes. But we have a fucking president who's 80 fucking two. <laughs> And he's barely walking, bro. This is what I'm saying. He's... COVID should have rid us of this problem. We were this close. We were this close. I don't want 80 year olds driving. Why are they running the fucking country? <laughs> I, I don't. We should just. You know what? Let's... We should make a camp. We should make a camp. You know what? You know what? Let's let's hoard up all of the old people and put them in camps. It'll be great. They can concentrate on like their knitting. <laughs> they can do what they gotta do. Like everybody, like like seventy five plus. 
You know what? I take that back. 65 plus. Everybody 65 plus ends up in a fun little camp. They can do their knitting. They can, they can concentrate. Can, yeah, they can pretend to run their multi-billion dollar conglomerate corporations. They can have one in the camp. Yeah, exactly. They, they can, can do little tasks yeah. like make socks and we can sell them. We can even like have, a prison. Yeah, we can have and Biden. And have a, you know. We can have Biden and we'll give him like a pretend oval room. And Private he can, he, institution yeah. president. Yeah, he's not going to. What is he going to do? He's going to be like, I want some ice cream, all right? You know, like he's... Boom, soft serve for all. Just, we got just... it. In this retirement community, we'll serve everybody from Biden to Karen. You can count on us at Padre Possibilities. Do you, could you imagine being in an old folks home and you're just like... Is... I just did an ad read and you didn't even pay attention. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to fucking God. Okay, this is me as Joe Biden. Hey, my penis is too soft. I use blue chew to dig down on my wife. And I'm Kalamata Olive Harris. You're Kalamata. Kalamata Pia. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be a. <laughs> hey, it's Katamata Pia. Kamala Harris is like, I'm fucking vice president. I'm like, Katamata The vice Pia. president that put over 5,000 people of color into jail, even though she's brown. Mm. Yep, just a brown putting browns in brown, brown, brown in prisons. Browns. That's all our vice brown president. Brown prisons. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we, that's all we brown, endorse. I don't know. But like, like I, 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 that's the perfect thing is that like our president is oh. so old. And there's a video. Have you seen the video of him falling on the stage? Show up, pull up the video of him falling on the stage. We'll end this conversation and we can show Bay out. I have to leave. Joe, Joe Biden falling. ASMR Joe Biden falling. <laughs> we got to un... We got to un... We got to... <laughs> He's just like a fucking. They just got stretched him out every day. They're just like, all right, Joe, time to get out of bed. And he's like, I had a wonderful dream about being the president of the United States. <laughs> Look, we get that. You have that. You have that same. <laughs> Biden falls on stage. Yeah, bro. Look at this. Play it. He had delivered the commencement address. The president taking part in the time honored tradition addressing the graduates. Why is there? America's why is there a news guy explaining it? Hands. We all know what it is. Wait, wait, play that again, dude. Play that. Why do you fall like that? <laughs> Sideways. What? <laughs> what did he trip over? Stage fall over. The president quickly getting up with some help there. Quickly? Oh, was that quickly? For him. The White House says the culprit right there on the stage, on the left there. <laughs> the culprit? Right, go ahead, go ahead and stop the that. culprit? Like, this is an assassination I attempt? I saw this. I saw this. That's how easy it is to assassinate a current president. You yeah, put dude. a wire where it shouldn't be? No, 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 Shane, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Shane Gillis says this perfect. He said, Biden is the only president that you could punch assassinate. <laughs> yeah, in the throat, and he's done. Not even, dude, you could punch his toe, and he'd be like, Bro, hit him with his chest, that's immediate cardiac arrest. Right? True. I saw this hilarious meme of that, um, I saw this hilarious meme of that, um, <laughs> Of him falling with a f like a photo of Joe Rogan on the floor, like it was somebody like in the UFC, <laughs> like he was knocking him out, dude. It's unbelievable. Like we, there really should be, uh, there really should be an age limit on presidencies. And well, there's driving. an age minimum. There should be. So what the fuck? There should be an age limit on driving. There should be an age limit on the presidency. Uh, there should be an age limit on being able to be out in public. Age limit. Being well, we haven't to... had any reason to have those limits before. They should like be... I said, this is the oldest anyone has ever fucking yeah, been. It, it shouldn't. It should be illegal for them to pick up the phone, dude. I mean, to be honest, I have no problem. Hello. Going... Yes, I'll I'll buy your scam. You say that I'm going to go to collections if I don't give you twelve hundred. Dollars? That's who are the victims of scams. Mentally challenged people and the elderly. Yeah. Why the fuck are they allowed to do shit, dude? They are harmed to themselves. You didn't know that India's half half of India's GDP comes from just old people. <laughs> old confused people in oh, the United no. States. Oh. oh no. 
<laughs> like, oh no, old no confused people. Did okay, did I ever tell you about my great grandma escaping from the nursing home? Oh my god, dude. Okay, so <clears throat> she's still alive. My great grandmother is still she's fucking she's alive out. somehow. We don't know. She hasn't had any heart surgeries. I don't know. Yeah. She's Mormon. Um, she's a red headed Mormon and she's like almost a hundred years old. And basically what happened is that my grandpa dropped his, his mom, dropped her off at the nursing home. She stayed there for like a week and then she escaped, which like, first off, how do you escape from a nursing home? Because the only people that are in a nursing home that are old are patients. So like, how did you just let one walk out the doors? And then second off, I learned that, you know, an Amber alert when you lose a child. So if you lose an old person. Oh, that's what's that for? It's called a code silver. It usually just goes off of my phone. I look at it and I just keep pressing no until it goes away. I figured. Yeah, they, it's a code silver for old people. <laughs> oh, it's a code silver for. We got a code silver. And there's like some naked guy on the freeway. <laughs> yes. Literally, yes. If you lose an old person, it's, it's, it's a silver. It's not an amber alert. It's a silver alert. Silver alert? Yeah. I've never gotten one of those, which just shows you just how much importance we put into old people. <laughs> Zero. Zero. You'd be like, what the fuck is a silver? Negative what's, one. What's next? A magenta? A magenta alert? It's, what? Just, it's just a gay person. Like walking, the rainbow, a rainbow alert. alert? We lost Gary! He said he was with his boyfriend, but then they broke up on the sidewalk and we can't find him. That's going to be the future. It's just going to be gay alarms. Gay alarms. Yeah, it's just gonna be one TV channel. It just shows like every every bad thing that's ever happened to gay people, just to remind them. <laughs> the so, news it just has a scrolling line of this gay person was assassinated on Sixth Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this gay person salad wasn't made correctly. This Horrible. gay person did not like Horrible. the new season of the Kardashians yeah. as they got a BBL in Mexico and almost died. It almost died. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's a great point to, to end it up with Bay. Uh, I we're, have to go. She has to go, but we're going to bring on Jer. He's been talking the whole time behind tap the in. camera anyways. Tap in. <laughs> tap, tap, tap in. in. You got to tap in. Hello, sports. Where's all my sports team fans? My sports team's fans? <laughs> I'm still in love with that, girl. Woo, tap, Steelers! Tap in! Okay, do I have all my shit? No. It's yeah. always a big question. <laughs> Phone, wallet, keys, dignity. <laughs> Gotta grab that dignity before you go. <laughs> we leave that at the door when we come in. Did I cost. have a slice of that dignity before I left? <laughs> like it's banana. Can, can I get a box for this dignity? <laughs> can I get a box for my dignity? So I can bring right, it home. Can I get that on an extra container to go, please? I'll see you next week. Bye, Bay. Bye, Bay. Thank Drive you. safe. Thank you for the presents. Of course. Happy birthday. It's been my birthday for like a month, dude. It's great. Or I guess two just, weeks. It just never stops. Is this what girls feel like? It's my birthday month. Yeah. It just feels special all the fucking time. <laughs> Yeah, hey, knows, man. All it is, it's one surgery away from having all the attention I need in the world. <laughs> That's all it takes. It doesn't take that much, honestly. It just takes a fucking bio change these days. A few pills and, you know, the name change, you're there. A few pills? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Andreska. That's all it takes. You know, I always wondered, like, can you can you just go to the doctor and be like, you know, I have gender dysphoria. They're like, oh, you feel like you're a girl? But like, no, I feel like I'm a girl who's trapped in, I feel like I'm a guy, a girl who's trapped in a guy's body. Or no, the other way. It's confusing. I feel like a guy who's trapped in a girl's body, and then they, and then they would give you testosterone. You know what I mean? Then you got freed steroids. Honestly. Medicaid steroids? Hell yeah, dude. That's the best kind. Just to start overdosing on fucking testosterone, just angry all the time, and you don't know why. That's what happens, dude. Yeah, that's what happens. You start, yeah. you start getting, you start running <clears throat> on that tea. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, that girl of yours starts looking like a punching post real fucking <laughs> quick. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It fucking increases. No, it does. It increases aggression and increases anger. A lot of trans men have problems with that because. They like all of a sudden they get all this 
they got one. They got two things. They get aggressive, and they get horny, which I think is so ironic, because like all these women are like, I don't understand how you're not horny all the time. You know, like I feel like in general, like men are just so much more horny beings, right? We're so much more driven by it. It's like girls can be horny, but they're not as driven by it, you know? Like, they don't go out of their way to do shit just because they're horny. It's more of, like, a side effect of, like, what they're feeling at the moment. As opposed to men, it's like, we get horny, and then we end up conquering fucking entire empires for whatever fucking reason. (laughs) And then we get that post-nut clarity after we, like, get our empire, you know? You're like, fuck, what did I do that? She's not that pretty. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> just like uh just like uh Alexander's just sitting there like, dude, what the fuck did I just do, bro? I, like sorry, like you just have the biggest empire ever just because you're a horny ass. I guess the the best example of that would be uh would be uh Oh fucking what's his name? Genghis Kong. Dude, yeah, no, that's a really good example for that, that one. That man literally that- used his dick. <laughs> To motivate him to, like, create one of the largest empires this, like, world has ever seen. And then, like, drastically change the entire world's population at the same time. Yeah, oh. that, that man had two fucking Not even things the... on his mind. It was conquer land yeah. and conquer women. Yeah, yeah, Con- like, Conquer land, conquer pussy. But conquer pussy was the first, then conquer land. I mean, pretty, if, yeah. If you think about it, he conquered more pussy than he did conquered land. I mean, once you're at a certain area, you gotta start expanding, you know? <laughs> Yeah, good. Try new things. If you really think about it, Genghis Kong was just like the first Tinder user because <laughs> he really set fire to literally everything. <laughs> just see him like, Archer, send a, send a message to that town. I'm coming there next. No, no, no. I'm just imagining him like having his like minions bring him like woman. And it was his first time. He's like, I uh, like. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. 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 Oh. Ah, uh, no. She'll do, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a straight execution. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, know? nah, nah. Just nah. kill her, dude. Gene pool. Just kill her, no. dude. We don't Gene even pool. want yeah. No. Gene pool. Oh, my God. Gene pool. Nope. That was the whole thing, dude. He just, like, he was just horning around, you know? He just wanted to try new kinds of girls, you know? What if Genghis Khan wasn't that bad of a person? He was really just a guy with a wide variety of types. You know? In today's world, he'd be considered progressive, if you really think of inclusive, if one might say. You know? Can you imagine Genghis Khan? He Kong really to be didn't discriminate, today? dog. He really didn't. Like, from all the way from the Asias to the Europe's. True. He came from fucking border to border, dude. He did his thing. He didn't care about race, he just wanted it all. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, me? I'm not racist. I love all pussy. Genghis got that dog in him. <laughs> cheers to that. Well, I don't know why we're cheersing to Genghis <laughs> Kong, but sure. We're, well, man, no matter what ethnicity you have, you probably have at least 0.0% Genghis in you. Yeah, that's true. You know, how could you be mad at the guy? The guy fucking gave you some genetics. That's absolutely horrible, dude. That's why all men nowadays are warriors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Honestly, like, no. at certain, there's this, like, technically you can kind of argue that Genghis Khan was almost worse than Hitler. You know what I mean? I mean, honestly, yeah. Because, like, like, the argument's there, I'll definitely admit. You know, Hitler wasn't visiting these camps, bruh. He wasn't, th- he wasn't smelling that, dude. Like, he was doing his own shit. Fucking painting dogs like in the Alps for most of the fucking time, you know. Just try, still trying yeah. to become a professional artist. Never but, made it, by the way. But Genghis, watch was, out for artists. Yeah, dude, Genghis was. He was right. There. He was too close, dude. That, he was right there. You know what I'm saying? He, he was. He was. He was really inside and a part of it. If you know what I'm talking about. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Whether if they wanted him there or not. Yeah. Oh, that's too historically accurate. I mean, oh, God. I, I definitely think the arguments can be made there that Genghis Khan probably was worse. I don't know what the uh, exact death rate that man has, but I guarantee it's pretty high. Yeah. And, but, I, I mean, mean, if you alter the entire fucking world's population at the exact same time by the gene pool, 
That's that's a pretty long standing effect. But like, also, like, if you just go back in in general, like in history, I feel like a random dude would be worse than Hitler. You know what I mean? I, I feel like the more you go back, like the worse people get. I don't know. I heard Jesus was a pretty cool dude. Do you think that? Yeah, bro, that was one guy. <laughs> You don't think people was what about Muhammad, slaying, bro? killing, doing drugs in Bethlehem, bro? I mean, to be fair, we only the know about... The beat the, to the Ethlehem, bro? He might have been. To be fair, we only know about him up to like 12, and then he comes back at like 30. That's so realistically, positive, bro. there was like 20 years that he could have just been doing, you know, literally God knows whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kept that out. Like, there's a reason he got his they wisdom from out, something, yeah. you know? I'm just also, saying. Like, Life he... experience doesn't come out of nowhere, yeah. Where do you get all of these prostitute contacts from, bro? Could their friends? <laughs> when was the last time you like accidentally bumped into a prostitute? Colfax. I, I I don't go down there because I don't want prostitutes. <laughs> I don't know. You might be doing your own thing, but hey, man, you take a wrong turn one time, and you know what? All of a sudden, you're like, even I'm that, in the wrong dude. I don't like. I don't be seeing chicks like standing out there, being like, ooh, you know. But uh, oh, look, all I I'm saw gonna... a guy once. Actually, that that rattled my brain. <laughs> yeah, no, literally like, like the you. doozy dyke like Damn, dude. ass high fucking God. jeans, like the the straight booty short doozy dykes with the fucking fishnets and like the biggest heels I've ever seen. Dude, that's I was I I I I I was rattled for a minute. I'm not gonna lie, I was not prepared to see that that day. The economy's rough, dude. Yeah, I was like three, four years ago too. That was before rough. that was before it was popular too. That was like four years ago. This man was like so so Look, stunning, you, so brave. You know the economy is in shambles. <laughs> it's in shambles, dude. If we're seeing this out on the streets, dude. This was like, I don't think this was like Colfax. This was like Arapaho too, like middle. No, not even Arapaho. It was like Mid Aurora. I was on a, I was on a test drive for my you fucking know, auto job. If this economy keeps getting worse, pretty soon, like middle age, like dads are gonna be hitting up OnlyFans, dude. They already do. They do. Well, maybe they're not on it, but they're the ones subscribing to it. That's very different. <laughs> you just said hitting it up, dude. I no, I swear to God, they'll be they'll be on there making content, bro. They're gonna be having like live sets, pricing, and everything. You watch. Are you kidding me? Think about it. There's grass some, mowing OnlyFans. There's some middle aged guy out there. Some guy named Tim. Let's say, okay, Tim is forty eight. Okay, he's been working in the same company for the past 15 to 20 years, and the man makes $120,000 a year. He thinks he's making bank. He's got a nice house. He's got that mortgage. He's got that hot blonde that occasionally cheats on him, but not all the time, right? She has her time. She doesn't, right? Got the tennis instructor, which we're not going to really mention, but that's Tim's life. And then all of a sudden, Tim looks at this girl that like Jessica. Jessica's nineteen. She's making sixteen grand a fucking month by spreading her ass cheeks, dude. <laughs> She's making his CEO's pay, dude. Who? What was on the, the last time I was on? Yeah. Fucking what? what how much yeah, was that on, last chick no, making? No, no, Wasn't on, she making yeah. like thirty nine million or some shit like that? She said she's been doing no, it for no, like no, four months. Dude, no, it was ridiculous. If amounts. it's the if it's the top creator, which I don't know who it is, but whoever that girl is, you know what? Respect to her, dog. She found something and she got she did something one, right. Yeah. yeah, she did. If you're number, number one, one, you did dude. something right. If you, you know, what I'm saying, like, look, I every man's worst nightmare is having a daughter that ends up on OnlyFans. But if she comes to me and she's like, look. I understand. It's a little lot, but check this out. And it says number one. I'd be like, we cool. We cool. We cool. But number two, your ass is grounded, bro. To be fair, I mean, the minute she starts like paying off my mortgage for me at that point, can I really be mad? Yeah. Yeah, pay the mortgage, babe. Don't worry. I'll, so I'll hold the camera. I'll hold the camera. I'll hold well, the lights. I, I don't know if I'm holding the camera for my daughter, bro, but you know. <laughs> I I'll be so. I might like depending on the situation. I was thinking about mortgage from like, like I, my wife. I might wife, be supportive, dude. but why is your daughter paying your mortgage? But you, you literally said your daughter's doing OnlyFans. That's true. 
I, you know, yeah, it should be grounded. You know I mean, what? if you she's buying up my supportive, mortgage for dog. me, I'm supportive. Can't you know? even mad about that. It's 2023. We supportive out here, bro. I saw there. I swear to God, on I think it was on a whatever podcast. Yeah, one of course. the girls said she had an OnlyFans, and sometimes her parents help her take photos. I shit you not. I it reminds me of that not. fucking American Dad episode where Haley wanted to be a stripper and stands this out there like, you're never supportive of me. He's like, you know what? I want to be supportive. He's like in the fucking front crowd just throwing dollar bills at her. He's like, whoa! Yeah, show those! And she's just like, I'm not. I'm done with this shit. Hey. She's like, I'm, I'm going home. I'm done. Like, nah. That brings up a good, good point. You know, Have you noticed... That it feels like in society there's a shift, right? Which uh, society is always shifting, right? Yeah. That's a part of it. Right. It's, you know, it's it's almost like a fluid, you know? Uh, and – but at, it, it feels like sh- – it feels like things are getting so much more like accepting of sexual things, right? There's like this openness of sexuality that we've never seen before. Yeah. But at the same time – there's also a lot more conservatism. It's like you're not supposed to talk about these things. You're not supposed to say these. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that, which I felt like was a huge thing in the 40s, 50s, right, and, and everything beforehand. It was always like you need to say the right thing. You, do, you can't be rude. You know, don't talk about politics. And now it's almost like the same with other shit, you know. It's like people are saying, like, you shouldn't, you know, you should be conservative in these values, but then sexuality is the most. But at the same time, like, ex- sexuality is, like, a lot more accepted now, but we're also seeing the amount of sex that young people are having going down. What do you think, what do you think that is? All around, I think it'd be a lot of different points. Um... I mean, especially in different things. I mean, right now we are a lot of people are working more than they ever have before, so that takes off a lot of free time. Especially sure. when you have to pair like different incomes and everything, that creates a lot of With stress. Women working too. Exactly. It used to be that like you know, women would used to rarely work. Men would work all the time. You had this whole, entire open pool of women to date. Now all of a sudden, instead of them going out to social events like they used to, and that's how they used to meet people, now all of a sudden they are. Uh, you know, they're at work. And I feel like a lot more people are meeting partners at work too. Honestly, I don't know enough to say if I really agree with like more nowadays. I Maybe it's not as like frowned upon necessarily as it like it used to be depending on the company itself. But I, I'd say there's always been like different forms of fraternization in the workplace. At least before, maybe it wasn't like actually making relationships out of it, but more of just like, you know, flirting or having like, you know, your workspace kind of thing where it's like that work fun or whatever while you still have relationships at home. But like another thing a lot of it too is like just just a huge shift in values nowadays too. Like dating's entirely different. A lot of that's gone online. Yeah. Like you said, more people are working, there's less time. So it's not like you're going out, meeting people on the street. Like now it like beforehand, like you'd meet somebody on the street but like you know, catch your eye, be like, wow, you're absolutely gorgeous. Like, I'd like to get you to know you a little better. Can we, you know, maybe meet at some time, you know, fill each other out? Nowadays, you do that, you're immediately labeled as, like, a creeper or something just for trying to have a conversation in public. And and there's a lot of stuff like that. It's like, if they're not doing it online, it's kind of disregarded at this point. Yeah. Which is also, like, a, a weird kind of shift in values because before, you met people in person. You said, hey, you know. I'm attracted to you. You're like, do you want to get to know each other better and see if you know we have same ideals? Now, like, you're not supposed to talk at the gym or the superstore, at the grocery store, in public or on the street or anywhere in person. So it's like, how are you supposed to be meeting people? Yeah, I feel like, uh, especially for men, it feels uh, like you're. It's not worth the risk to go up and meet women today because you're worried about like what. Uh, her reaction is going to be right like you used to be like i'm gonna go put myself out there i'm gonna go let her know who i am and if she likes me if she doesn't like you know i'm just gonna do with that information what i will and either move on or you know try something more to try to get her it's like this idea of wooing but i think the idea of wooing is almost kind of gone now yeah because you not only are being you know, I feel like a, a lot of women, especially like very attractive women, end up on social media, and as soon as you're an attractive woman on social media, now you're not only just being pursued by every dude in your small town, now you're getting pursued by an entire hemisphere yeah. <laughs> worth of men. And so 
And that just like skews your mind so much. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I mean – even like a lot of other – like a lot of older generations have even made like that same point. It's like you know when you're in a relationship yeah. with somebody, you know, before you'd figure out your problems, you'd work things out, you stay together. Now, especially with everything online, it's – you can literally open up an app and yeah. see what options you have. Do you think – do you think that uh, because of this uh, new shift in dating – do you think it makes for better relationships or worse relationships? Because one, you get to see this person and what they really are like and about before you even get to meet them. So it kind of helps you filter out through all the craziness, right? Also, like, divorce rate was not as high back then. But at the same time, divorce was more looked down upon. So a lot of people ended up staying in relationships that they didn't necessarily want to be in, right? Uh and just ended up staying there for the sake of either religion or social pressure, right? But now divorces are higher. And you, do you think that that's because that's truly what people want, right? Or is it because they're just not giving enough chance into this relationship because it's uh, – because I have so many options. Especially on such a broad spectrum of things like that, I think it'll be a very – wide degree of varying factors like even with the relationships as far as like there's a higher divorce rate yeah. nowadays on the opposite because yeah before it was very wide looked down upon and not nearly as accepted to divorce when you're in an unhealthy relationship however before when you were locked into that unhealthy relationship that's where a lot of abuse came from and so a lot of that either was accepted or you know kind of just downplayed way back in the day so i mean nowadays there's, there's almost no tolerance for any of that. So, that, you know, divorce rates are higher if you're unhappy in a relationship. So I think it's just one of those I almost generational things where we're not necessarily better or worse, yeah. but we're, we're, we're learning, you know. We're, we're still learning. We're finding ourselves. You know, we're figuring out everything going around it. So, like, divorce rates, higher. But it's if, you're, if you're not in a healthy relationship, you shouldn't be stuck in that unhealthy relationship. It's true. Because that's where a lot of more – I mean, unhealthy things are going to happen. I'd rather end up in a divorce than an abusive relationship, for example. But it's it's definitely a weird. You but know, does scene that going diminish through. what marriage is? Because like the further back in history we go, the more serious this idea of marriage was. Correct. It's like you and this person forever. Now it seems like the more that divorces are happening, and the more accepted they are, which on one hand is giving these people these freedoms that they didn't have before and especially for women right because men were able to get out of it whatever way that they wanted right but women were truly the victims when yes, it came to divorce 100%. back then because they didn't have the choice to leave and so if a guy was an asshole or a dick which happened a lot because there are more arranged marriages than there were personal marriages right you just ended up with this guy or whatever because he had so many goats <laughs> you know uh and so like you get more choice but then it ends up creating kind of less value in in this idea of marriage which on one hand i i can't like i'm stuck on this because on one hand i want people to be able to have the choice to get out when they need to, right? But in the cases where they don't need to get out and it's more of just a matter of inconvenience, I think that's a big problem is that as soon as we start to feel inconvenienced, yeah. we see convenience just an app away from us. So why wouldn't we? We can get rid of this inconvenience and move on to the convenience just like that. It would be pretty, you know, pretty easy. So I think a big kind of shift after – it kind of happened along with a lot of that too is a lot of people – There's, I mean there's a lot of people – the biggest thing is like you can differentiate relationships yeah. in two different ways and I think it's a big shift that ended up happening is like – especially with original marriage. Like it's a ceremony before – like nowadays it's more of just like a government practice so that you can get all the benefits and all that and that's why there's higher divorce rates. A lot of people – I know a lot of people have gotten married just for the like government legal benefits of it and more of like a transaction almost. I feel but, like you could just budget more. <laughs> well, like you get shared bank accounts, you get better taxes. There's like actual, like legit government benefits yeah. to doing it. But is it like really worth just like getting like wh whatever percentage it is that you get back every year from having these benefits of getting married? I feel like that percentage is small enough that you could also make up for it by just better budgeting. Again, there's more than just like mon like uh, like monetary. Um, 
benefits as far as it goes. Sorry, I had a complete I, mind I, fart. I, I but think, well, one of the most, biggest problems I'd just say tax. Mostly, but there are like a large range of different benefits if you know how to use about them. I guess that's true. But I'd you say can, one of the you biggest can qualify differences. qualify for higher higher loans. Yeah. You know, I'd say one of the biggest problems that ended up happening, or kind of like shift that ended up happening, though, is they went from more like marriage used to be a ceremony. It's literally two people joining a union together. I think a big shift that ended up happening was people stopped going into relationships with you know unconditional love, going you know I want to be with this person, I want to support them through and through each other. So you, you know the two become one. That's the union. Nowadays, a lot of relationships are transactional. If I put this. If I put X into relationship, I expect X back. This person better be putting X into me so I can put X into them. Everything nowadays is very transactional, especially on relationships. Wouldn't you so argue think... that like that relationships early on were also like way more transactional? Because it was literally a transaction. It was like I get these resources from your family and you get these resources from my family. And that's why we're bringing together our son and daughter. But – the difference is also is that well, like for arranged marriage, yeah, one hundred percent, yeah, transaction. I feel like those relationships, though, they weren't really real in the first place, yeah. anyways, because they no, almost that, that, always that, had that mistresses. That is a business transaction by they, definition. Yeah, they that almost was a always had mistresses, or what is it? What is it? a mister? A mister? What's a mistress? No, what's the meister? male version? A meister? Meister. <laughs> The kegmeister. <laughs> <laughs> you have a kegmeister in here? What up, dude? Well, I mean, like, yeah, if you're going, like, way back in time to shit like that, then, yeah, yeah like, all of those arranged marriages 100% were transactional. A lot of times it was because of, you know, like, royalty status or shit like that, you know, kind of going off of, you know, my land, like, my place, your place. We're at war. If I sell you my daughter and we join our countries, then we can, you know, start figuring shit out essentially. Yeah, I mean. So, like, and that, I mean, especially way back when with the range ranchers like that, another big, I mean, th- that's also a time where women were also just viewed as property. So, like, that's they true. they were transactional at that point. So, so like, like did, we, we've come a long way from there. But so, like, did marriage even mean anything back then either? Like, it, it seems just like another business transaction. So, if that's the case, then in the in, with how we are right now with the divorce rate so high, then it really doesn't seem that much different other than a bunch of business interactions kind of changing up. But now it's like you actually get the choice of choosing who you want to be with. So there must be much – there must be more substance into that, right? But I, I think, mean a lot of that's cultural differences yeah. too. Like different religions, different cultures, Gender different differences beliefs. too. I mean because 80% of divorces are enacted by women. Yeah. So I, if that doesn't talk about the psychology of genders, you know, I don't know what does. That a lot of it is oh, n- not only the attention that a, that women get pretty fairly easy on the internet, right? Like I I get a lot of attention on the internet, but I had to grind for four years. I can't tell you how infuriating it is when for four years I've been putting video after video daily, video, 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 and then you go up on some girl's page, and it was like created like two weeks ago. There are like 340,000 followers. Flash like the solitus amount of cleavage. Yeah, dude. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? But, you know, the, the thing is, is that that's not ever going to change. It's not, the feminine is always going to get more attention from the masculine, right? Um, but that you know that brings up a lot more issues, just like you know the the uh, kind of the negative view that we have on like the male gaze now, like this idea of men sexualizing women, which is so ironic because we're in a society that says that we need to accept sex work. <laughs> You know, honestly, that is pretty funny as an ironic. Like, honestly. Like, we need to accept sex work. Sex workers are here. They're just trying to provide for but themselves. But don't sexualize Which them. is something I completely agree with. Yeah. Sex workers should be able to do whatever they want. Yes. But if you say sex workers are great, where they're amazing, they're just doing what they want to do, just accept them for what it is. But men, buying that sex work is fucking disgusting. How dare you buy sex work? I can't believe you would buy sex work and sexual a woman but that woman is beautiful and she's just so amazing and she's just out there trying to be the best version of herself and it's like what happened there you know what i mean i th- like i thought we always love prostitutes 
<laughs> Dude, OnlyFans I mean, girls are prostitutes. They are. They are. They're selling sex. Yeah. It's just sex online, you know. But and then all of a sudden, it's just like this horrible thing to buy it. But it's not a horrible thing to produce it, which is a unique case. When it comes to cocaine, horrible thing to buy it, horrible thing to produce it, right? I mean, I put more shit on the seller on like drugs. Okay, hold on, oh, oh, heroin. <laughs> yeah, horrible yeah. thing to produce. <laughs> You're like, wait, hold on. Let's take look, a minute before we make look, any. Look, I, I, I'm not a fan. I've never done it. Yeah, I've yeah. seen the absolutely the gorgeous, like yeah. the, the, the destructive amount of like things that people can do. And my yeah. friends was literally addicted but, for years. It's a horrible the fucking basic substance. society idea is but that I, drugs are horrible to produce yes. and horrible to consume. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's it's all across all across like the, you know, but except for when it comes to that because there's something creepy about a guy buying porn, but it's not supposed to be creepy when it but it isn't, dude. Like when I think about a girl making porn, I'm not creeped out. But when I think about a guy going and buying porn, I'm thinking about some greasy guy who's in his like Early forties and Completely he's just fat and he's middle, just like mid, like you know, mid tier balding, yeah, he's just sweating, just sitting in one of those sweating. weird corner store XXX video yeah, yeah, stores. Yeah, yeah. He's it's got just two, like uh. he's got two locks on his phones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he just like he's just breathing into the into the room. You know what I mean? You, you ever meet someone that just breathes into the, it breathes their existence? Bro, redditors. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like your average Redditor. Redditor. Yeah. But when I think about a girl making porn, I'm thinking about some hot blonde with nice tits, right? She's lost and she just wants her stepbrother to help her out. She you gets know what stuck I mean? in the most obvious yeah. places, yeah. <laughs> Which, like, and I'm not even complaining about this because I think that this is a natural thing, right? I, I mean, think that. It, I feel like, I mean, it always has been. I yeah. mean,. Look at the Kama Sutra. That thing was made like what, fucking hundred, two hundred, like hundreds of years ago. Maybe even like a few thousand or something. Yeah. I mean, that that shit's like one of the original scriptures from India, almost. Like, I also think it's like a historic snapshot that we have in our biology that we understand that the extent that men are are willing to go to to get sex, right? Thousands of years of violence, which I think has made its way through up our genetic code, which has essentially made us made us kind of like it's it's almost kind of like a defense mechanism, right? It's like when you see a man want sex, it comes off wrong. You're you're worried. You're you know it, who knows what could happen. But when a but when a woman produces sex or a woman is in the act of a sex, it's almost and you it's, even when you're hearing me say it, it's like men pursue sex, men and women act out sex, right? And so it. I don't know. I, it seems natural. It seems like, like what this, what the, uh, you know, it, it's, it seems like it's almost kind of written in our biology. Cause like, you know, men will always run after that. Men will always pursue it. Right. One of the things that's, I mean, on that same thing, like one of the things that stuck with me forever, fucking from Futurama, wonderful show. They literally had like a whole little, like 30 second segment about that because it was so like, it was like Fry trying to, you know, date like a Lucy Lou robot, and he had to sit down and literally watch a video titled like "Why Dating a Robot Is Bad," and it pretty much went on like war, science, biology, conquering everything, like everything great mankind has ever done was to impress a woman. Yeah, and it's like that's always stuck with me. Something I was like, you know what though? Historically, when you really look back, it's really fucking true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Also, like woman. Definitely. Like, all great achievements are to impress Way somebody. more attractive than men. Dude, I would much ra- – like, I would much rather see a – I would much rather see, like, an ugly woman naked than, like, a good-looking dude naked. <laughs> Jer's like, uh, well, you depends know, depends on <laughs> – I'm trying to think of some names here. I don't know, like – if it's Ryan Reynolds, I'll take him I was every about time. to say, yeah, bro, okay, yeah. what about, like, that That's ogre? That's an exception. What though? about That's that like... ogre on, like, whatever podcast that you share once in a while? Her versus, oh, like, Ryan God. Reynolds. Who would you take naked? No, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. like, 
I'm just saying, you know, like that, that's that, as far as a broad statement goes. Yes, but yeah. I mean, there, there are some specific cases. I take it back. Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> there's a few Star Wars characters out there, uh, which I, <laughs> I don't think I would recover. Yeah, but also like that's like traumatizing to see. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, who knows? You know, the world moves on. But like, Culture. you are you are right though. Like. On an aesthetic standpoint, like, w- women usually are more beautiful. Like, even in art, like, old school things. That's why, like, usually they're usually more depicted on different art forms yeah. than otherwise. I mean, it, that's been something throughout all of history. Like, it's also, like, a form of, like, innocence. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't see a You don't see a seven-foot-five guy and think innocent. Like, no matter what they look like. You know what I mean? They could have the nicest face in the world, but just because they're tall... Bro, he could be big. a dwarf, and I'm not thinking innocent. Yeah, you're not thinking. In fact, like I might, innocent. I might even be more scared. I'm like, yo, this guy's out for violence. Yeah, he's got nothing else to lose. <laughs> like, but it's it like, it's, it's, it's like woman physically being usually, um, like the like generally women are smaller than men, right? Which also kind of brings in that innocence, you know, idea. Um, like, does that? Does that change from now on, right? Like this idea of like woman being innocent. Now that we're progressing, like this whole idea about woke culture, some parts of it great, some parts of it bad, is that we're progressing, which shows that we're not ending right now. This isn't ending. Like this, ha- this is going somewhere. Right. Right. Like, do we get to a point where that all changes up? Right. Do Do you see? traditional gender roles surviving in 50 years and i think that's a great question to end the pod on i think that's a really good one yeah honestly i don't think they'll be exactly traditional as you know as far as we know to traditional yeah. i think that this that would be like 2070 dude. yeah i don't think it'd be like that's opposite nuts. like i don't think it'd be like an uno reverse card where all of a sudden like the woman has to pay for everything and the man's getting taken care of but i definitely think it'd be going more towards like a 50 50 split which I mean, I think... Just like Sweden. Yeah, but on the opposite end, too, to be fair, like, even the more traditional set, kind of like you mentioned, like, that was also during a time where, like, you know, women weren't really working. They were more, you know, stay in the home, taking care of the home while the man worked to provide the home. So he's already that almost, in its own right, 50-50. Now that, you know, everyone's literally equal, everyone has to work, everyone's in the same shit. I mean, it literally makes sense to kind of almost have that 50-50 split because now you're – instead of sharing like one person does this, the other person does this, that's your single share yeah. responsibility. Now, both people are working. You put the same income in. Both people are taking care of the house. You put the same work in. So like – yeah, I'm, I'm honestly in 50 years, I highly doubt that like the original traditional standard that we used to have is going to be like in any form of you know the same. We're going to have a bunch of alien babies – because it's just gonna be nothing. It's all just the, gonna be all the great. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just gonna be a bunch of alien babies that are like, we don't believe in difference. It's all just one thing. The one, the one and only. And then it'll turn into some kind of religion. When say found that perfect, religion, like 50, 50, 50, 50 balance between like testosterone and estrogen, yeah. where it's just like you're like you're neither. You're just. A part, I mean, a part of me feels like with the death of gender roles ends up like the death of child rearing you know what i mean like it becomes more like okay let's just put a kid into a school and let them teach them or Or autonomous yeah yeah no i agree with that 100 percent. because i feel like that those certain gender roles act as not in equal this is the biggest thing that i think people get wrong about it but different important parts right um and I think that they serve different purposes. Like yeah. this idea about women being a lot more understanding, uh, women being a lot more emotional, being like these are things that you want in your kid yeah. to grow up in. You, you, if you don't have a kid that's emotional or understanding or – you know, like this kid, that kid's going to grow up to be Patrick Bateman. So you get, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's how you get your new Dahmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, but then – Patrick on, Bateman was a really good example. On the other that, hand, yeah. like men are known to be more logical. Uh, like they, they, uh, they, 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 sh- they teach you how to solve problems in like a numerical consecutive way, right? It's not about like understanding the feelings of things uh, and they teach you to kind of like pursue your dream and 
um, like become a better version of yourself. There's this thing about like evolution with men that I think inherently comes with testosterone, higher testosterone, right? Which is why I think that my parents did it perfect, right? And this is coming from like an immigrant family. My mother basically took over most of my child rearing up until I was in high school. And then my dad started to take a more active role later on in my life, right? Which was perfect because when you're a kid, you want to learn how to control your emotions, right? You want to learn how to act in society. You want to learn how to, to be aware of people's like understanding. So learn the do's and don'ts. You know, am I doing this? Is this wrong? Should I not be doing this, right? Is this, this is something I should, you know, I should, I should feel good about this, right? The, like the basis of like a human is formed during those times, right? And then after that, like you have your dad kind of sit you down. He teaches you how to change a tire. He teaches you how to build a business. He teaches you about taxes. He teaches you how to fix issues and how to kind of move on in the world. I think the combination of those two things essentially create what you would call as close as you can be a perfect kid yeah you know what i mean no i mean i fully agree i mean that's i mean i as far as like the differences in gender go i think that they're beautiful yeah. differences it's it's the yin and the yang you, and you have one part you have another part everyone has a little bit of the other inside of themselves yeah and even but though you need them both together to create a full yeah, yeah. and even though that it's the vast majority of men that produce these more masculine properties and women who produce these feminine qualities i know people who have parents that have it flipped right and that's totally okay if you have an emotional dad. You know, it's going to take some getting used to, bro, because he's going to be crying next to you. <laughs> you know, you're going to be like, what is wrong with him? What you is got going an A on your report? Hey, my boy. I love you. You know, <laughs> and then you're, then you're like, mom is sitting over there and be like, Smack you your fucking joint football. Smack <laughs> back. Yeah, good job, we'll son. Send him to the army. He'll toughen him up. You know, it's going to be a little confusing, but at the very least. I'd be confused. Yeah. At the very least, like, you'll, you'll have those roles, you know, and I think that's, that's something that a lot of people miss. It's always like, oh, you're trying to put women down. You're trying to make it seem like women aren't able to do that other thing. But like, no, woman can do that. Just make sure that your husband's a pussy. You know what I mean? Because then, because then your your kid learns to be a pussy, but then to also be an asshole. You know, it's like your mom teaches you to be a pussy, and your dad teaches you to be an asshole, and together you end up a pussy asshole, and you end up sprouting into the beautiful butterfly that you are today. Um, <laughs> which I think is I th that's that's a great ender for me, Jerry. You got anything to add before the before we close it out? No, I think kids is growing out of pussy assholes is a great way to end. Yeah, pussy assholes is where it goes, and that's exactly that's where you start. need to go. Uh, <laughs> right now, Padre Podcast is blowing up, guys. Get in before everyone else is already fans, because we're going to be special treating our first fans. That being said, we are starting season two, guys. New episodes every Wednesday, and I promise... I pinky, pinky, pinky promise. I swear to God, it's going to be Wednesdays. From this day on, Wednesdays at 8 a.m., these episodes are all going to come out. On top of that, we have started our Patreon, everybody. Amazing. Go, go, go. Subscribe. You are going to be getting content that no one else is getting. We're talking about all of our podcasts that we do absolutely smash. <laughs> yeah. We are going to get blasted out of this world, stuff that we can't show on the internet that we're bringing to you. All you have to do is subscribe to our Patreon. Go to our Patreon right now. It's just Padre Podcast. You should be able to see us there. We're going to have content up for you to watch as we see it. Um be sure to like, comment, subscribe. You know it. We need more love on our TikTok uh, account. Other than that, we are blowing up, people. This is happening.